السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم يا مقلب القلوب والأبصار ثبت قلوبنا على دينك بسم الله Last time we talked about the uh, uh, story of the two people of the two gardens. So we, we saw at the end how the non-believer lost everything. All his work, all his money, everything he had was lost. And only at that time he remembered that he shouldn't have associated another God with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he should have uh, believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So today, inshallah, we will be going on. We are uh, on ayah 45. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, وَضْرِبْ لَهُمْ مَثَلَ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا كَمَا إِنْ أَنْزَلْنَاهُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ فَاخْطَلَتْ بِهِ نَبَاتُ الْأَرْضِ فَأَصْبَحَ هَشِيمًا تَذْرُوهُ الْرِيَاحِ So mention to them, Ya Muhammad, the parable of the worldly life. It's like the water which we send down from the sky and with this water, the vegetation mingles and becomes fresh and green. But after a while, when, it, when the season is uh, uh, done, then this greenery would become dry and then it will be broken into pieces, which the wind will scatter. So this is all that Allah is able to do. So this dunya is like this water that's coming down from the sky. So now imagine this image. Water coming down on the ground. The ground gets uh, uh, watered. So a lot of greenery. But later on, this is gone. What does this remind us of? It reminds us of the human himself. Born, raised, got big, got old, and then died. This is life. As if someone who is traveling, got tired, stopped, rested under the tree, and then went on with his life. But at the end, that person is dying. What is he taking with him? Before ta talking about what he is taking with him, let's talk about life itself. So we said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa kana Allah ala kulli shay'in muqtadira, Allah is able to do everything. He's able to give and to prevent, to raise and to humiliate, to benefit and not to benefit. Al-mal wal banuna zinatu al-hayat al-dunya. Wealth and children are the atonement of, of life of this worldly life. Now think of the first two words, al-mal, wealth, wal banun, children. The word wealth, money, anything, so is said pre before children. Why? Because ma ma money and wealth is more important than children in a way that each and every person has, has wealth. Even the poorest person has some clothes on him, and this is his wealth. But 
not everyone has children. Some people do not get married. Some people will have, uh, will get married, but will not have children. But before getting married, they should have the money to pay to, uh, for the dowry, so to get married, and then they will have children if Allah predestined for them to have children. So zina means it's, it's adornment. It is not necessary. So wealth and money are zina, adornment. When a husband gets married and they don't get children, then he would be upset, she, the wife would be upset, everyone would be uh, uh, unhappy, and they would try to convince the man to get another wife, and they were... So, what happens? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would give, would give uh, children to some people, but he will, he will deprive others from, being, to, from having children. He will give girls to some people. He will not give boys. He will give boys and not girls. The point is, the man should accept everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him. Does he give him children? Does he not give him children? Does he give him wealth? Does he not give him wealth? There are people who are not married, but they are very happy. They are close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there are people who, ha who have the money and who have the children, but they are not happy. Sometimes the, 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 the wealth will be used against him because he, he, he does not fulfill Allah's right in his wealth. He doesn't do the sadaqah, he doesn't do the, the, the zakah, so his, his money will not have any barakah. He will say, Okay, I got my salary uh, today. A few days later, you will see that the salary is all gone. Where, where did it vanish? There is no barakah in the money. Check what's the reason. Is it halal money? Is it uh, money, legal money? Is it What's going on? Where is the barakah? Are you fulfilling the, uh, the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this money? Are you fulfilling the, the right of the poor people in this money? Giving sadaqah? Sadaqah always blesses the wealth and increases it. And every day, angels will tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, <clears throat> they will make the dua, Allahumma a'ti munfiqan khalafan wa a'ti mumsikan talafa. Ya Allah, give the one who is giving for your sake abundant, abundantly, and deprive that one who keeps his money for himself. Al-malu wal-banuna zinatu al-hayati dunya. So when people do not get children, are they happy with that? With what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had decreed on them? They will do their best on different methods, trying to get children, but khalas, there is no way. Allah did not uh, write for them to have any children. Uh, do they accept Allah's wish or not? This is the adornment of the life. It's not necessity of life. But what is the necessity? The necessity is to live according to Allah's will. The, the necessity is to live as per what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written for you, to accept whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you, to say alhamdulillah for everything that you have and you don't have. وَالْبَاقِيَاتُ الصَّالِحَاتِ خَيْرٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّكَ ثَوَابًا وَخَيْرٌ أَمَلًا So what are the baqiyatu salihat? 
الباقيات الصالحات are the good righteous deeds that will last for you till the day after. So these are the the reward that you have given for yourself, that you have uh, uh, saved for yourself, and the hope that you will have in the day after. So everything that was mentioned before al-baqiyat al-salihat is from dunya, al-mal, al-banoon, wealth, children, everything you have, this is for dunya. When someone dies, he will not take anything from that with him except al-baqiyat al-salihat. Once uh, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam slaughtered a sheep and <clears throat> Sayyidina Aisha knew that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loves the shoulder meat. So she distributed everything to the poor and she gave the poor everything except for the shoulder. And when Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked her, what have you done? What have you, what have you kept for yourself? What have you kept? She said, ذَهَبَ كُلُّهَا سِوَى الْكَتِفِ So I distributed everything except for the shoulder. But Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, بَقِيَ كُلُّهَا سِوَى الْكَتِفِ All of it was, uh, 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 was left for us except for the shoulder. And he is looking for the day after. So the reward, we got the reward that we, of the meat that we distributed. So the hope is to have in the akhirah what, what will get you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To work in this dunya for the akhirah. And remember that this dunya is going to vanish no matter what. How? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيَوْمَ نُسَيِّرُ الْجِبَالَ وَتَرَ الْأَرْضَ بَارِزَةً Remember the day we shall cause the mountains to pass away. The mountains that are holding the earth steady will, will vanish, will become like... Uh, uh, like wool fluffed up. This is what Allah says in Surah Al-Qari'ah. In another surah, Allah says, the, the mountains will be blown away. So they will not be in place. And they will be leveled plain. وَتَبْقَى الْأَرْضُ قَاعًا صَفْصَفًا So وَتَرَى الْأَرْضَ بَارِزًا there, there will be, the earth will be all plain, nothing on it. No mountains, no valleys, no river, nothing. There will not be any sign on earth. And on that day, no one will be hidden, no one will be absent. وَحَشَرْنَاهُمْ فَلَمْ نُغَادِرْ مِنْهُمْ أَحَدًا And we shall gather them all so that we will, we will leave none behind. قُلْ إِنَّ الْأَوَّلِينَ وَالْآخِرِينَ لَمَجْمُعُونَ إِلَى مِقَاتِ يَوْمٍ مَعْلُومٍ Tell them, the, 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 all, the, the previous people, the, the last people, everyone will be gathered, will be resurrected for a certain day. No one will be missing on that day. And they will be set before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in rows. So all creation will be standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah, will, Allah says in Surah Al-An'am, Ayah 94, وَلَقَدْ جِئْتُمُونَا كَمَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ أَوَّلَ مَرَّةٌ Now indeed, you have come to us as we created you for the first time. So, Sayyidah Aisha would ask Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, أَيَنظُرُ بَعْضُنَا إِلَى بَعْضٍ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Should we, each of us, we will be bare naked, we will, 
are we going to look at each other? But Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu says, لِكُلِّ مُرِئِنْ شَأْنُ يُغْنِي No Aisha, no one will be caring about anyone. Everyone will be concerned about himself only. يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِيهِ لِكُلِّ مُرِئِنْ مِنْهُمْ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ شَأْنُ يُغْنِي Man will flee from everyone, from everyone he knows. It's a heavy day. يوم ترونها تذهل كل مرضعة عما أرضعت وتضع كل ذات حمل حملها وترى الناس سكارا وما هم بسكارا. It's a fearful day. Everyone will flee from each other. You will see people as if they are drunk, but they are not drunk. They are so scared on that day. وعرضوا على ربك صفا. In Surah Al-Fajr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَجَاءَ رَبُّكَ وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ صَفَّى Your Lord had come and the angels rank up on rank, rows after rows. Their people will be set before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in order. بَلْ زَعَمْتُمْ أَلَّا نَجْعَلَ لَكُمْ مَوْعِدًا Tell them, you, you thought that we had, we had, no appointment with you? We had appointed no meeting for you? Za'amtum, they thought that there is no resurrection. They thought there is no reckoning. And that's why they, they exceeded in transgressing. al-kitab. The book will be produced. Everyone will get their book. So the book of deeds, which contains all the records, everything is recorded in that book, major and minor, significant or insignificant, great or small. Something you said, something you talked, something you looked at, something you went to, every single thing will be listed, will be recorded. فَتَرَ الْمُجْرِمِينَ مُشْفِقِينَ مِمَّا فِي and you will see the criminals, the wrongdoers, fearful of that which is therein. Fearful of the evil deeds they have done. They, uh, on that day, they will say, وَيَقُولُونَ يَا وَيْلَنَا يَا وَيْلَتَنَا يَا وَيْلَنَا They will they will be so scared. They will be so scared. What happened? So, يَقُولُونَ يَا وَيْلَتَنَا مَا لِهَذَا الْكِتَابِ Woe to us. They're expressing words of regret for having wasted their lives. What happened? They will say, مَا لِهَذَا الْكِتَابِ لَا يُغَادِرُ صَغِيرَةً وَلَا كَبِيرَةً إِلَّا أَحْصَاهَا What sort of a book is this which leaves neither a small thing nor a big thing but has recorded it? No matter how small the action is, it is recorded. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, لا تحقرن من المعروف شيئا ولو أن تلقى أخاك بوجه طليق Do not belittle anything, any good thing, even if you just smile to your brother. Even if you smile to the people, you know or you don't know. This is sadaqah, keep it for yourself. Give anything to be shielded from fire, even if it's half of a date, not the date, half of a date. And we know the story of the woman who, who was uh, thrown into hellfire because of a kitten that she kept that she imprisoned, that she would not let her eat, and she tortured that, that kitten. 
So never ever say, oh, this is a small sin. Never. Never say this is a small sin and I will, I will ask Allah for forgiveness. لا تنظر إلى صغر المعصية ولكن انظر إلى من عصيت Do not look at how trivial this sin is but look who did you see who, who did you commit this sin against Allah said then don't do it and you are doing it it will be recorded and it will be recorded with honesty and justice <clears throat> and in the day after, Allah is going to, to scale all the deeds. And they will find all that they did present, good and evil. The scale was, will, will be set to scale all the deeds. يُنَبَّأُ الْإِنسَانُ يَوْمَئِذٍ بِمَا قَدَّمَ وَأَخَّرُ This is Surah Al-Qiyamah. And everywhere in the Quran, there are so many examples about Yawm Al-Qiyamah and how people are going to be, to, to, to be presented with their deeds. So man will be informed of what he sent forward and what he had be, left behind. وَلَا يَظْلِمُ رَبُّكَ أَحَدًا And your Lord treats everyone with, with justice. Allah never treats anyone with injustice. He will judge between his creatures for all their deeds. Even animals, Allah will, will get them on the day of judgment. Why you uh, uh, did bad to this animal and he will, give, he will be so just between them and then they will be dust. وَيَقُولُ الْكَافِرُ يَا لَيْتَنِي كُنْتُ تُرَابًا At that time when the non-believer would see that the animals would become dust, then he would say, oh, I wish I am dust. وَلَا يَظْلِمُ رَبُّكَ أَحَدًا Allah will treat everyone with justice. And not only justice, guess what? Mercy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created mercy and divided it into 100 portions. He cut down only one portion to the earth. And this is what, what we see between a mom taking care of her children, between the animal mom taking care of her babies, between people taking care of each other. This one needs help, someone will help this one. Even if they are not Muslims, they will help each other. This is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَى وَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ شَرًا يَرَى If you do something good, then you will see good. If you do something bad, you will, you will, you will see exactly the same portion as you have done. Justice. But remember, no one is going to enter Jannah with his deeds. And this is what Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. And they asked him, Wala anta ya Rasulullah, not even you ya Rasulullah. He said, Wala ana illa an yataghammadani Allahu bi rahmati unless Allah had his mercy upon me. So we all are getting into Jannah by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But our deeds will be the reason where we will be placed in heaven. Lower heaven or highest heaven? Or al-firdaus al-a'la? Is it the first uh, palace on the, uh, on the entrance? Or is it so when you when you make dua, do not say, oh Allah, I want to enter Jannah. You are asking the most merciful, the most generous. So ask for the highest, 
always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, I want to be in the Firdaus al-A'la. I want to be with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I want to be with, with uh, uh, the, the messengers. I want, to, I want to enjoy the highest you can, you can give me. Ask. You are asking the most generous. Know how to ask. Know what to ask. Don't ask for trivial things. Allah is listening. Allah is saying, Ud'uni astajib lakum. I am listening to you. I will fulfill your prayers, but, but you have to ask. You have to pray for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, for, for valuable things. So this is how the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to have the just uh, uh, balances. We shall set up balances of justice on the day of judgment. So this is the image of the day of judgment. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding people who did not believe him. He's reminding them of the first time he created Adam alayhi salam. So what did he say? وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ اسْجُدُوا لِآدَمَ فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسَ كَانَ مِنَ الْجِنِّ فَفَسَقَ عَنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّهِ And remember when we said to the angels, prostrate yourselves unto Adam. So they did, except for Iblis. And we, Iblis was of the jinn, and he disobeyed the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So will you take, will you take him and his offsprings as protectors and helpers rather than me, while they are your enemies? So Allah is reminding people that when he created man, he asked the angels to prostrate. And they did. The angels are created so they would worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They would not disobey him in any action, in any order. They do not have the choice of disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. While jinn, they have that option. So Shay Iblis chose to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he said, خَلَقْتَنِي مِن نَارٍ وَخَلَقْتَهُ مِن طِينٍ You created me of fire and you created man of clay. I am much better than him. And this was his, his problem. He was proud. And pride leads to hellfire. لا يدخل أحد الجنة وفي قلبه مثقال ذرة من كبر None will enter heaven and there is a speck of pride in his heart. So why, why you man preferred to obey shaitan and to listen to shaitan who, who gave an oath to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he will do his best just to get man astray. There is still a chance to repent, so do it. Do not lose this chance now. Every night before you go to bed, just say, Ya Allah, I am repenting to you. Allahumma inni tubtu ilayka faghfir li. Ya Allah, I am repenting, forgive all my sins. And Allah accepts the, the, the person who asks for repentance. ما لم يغرغر يقبل الله توبة العبد ما لم يغرغر يغرغر the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts the repentance of his slave 
before his before saying it on his death on his bed uh, on his deathbed. So do not delay. You have you have a long time. Don't waste it. Use it for the for pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do whatever you know this will please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do it. If you know that this action will not please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will please shaitan, don't do it. So what an evil is the exchange that people would, the wrongdoers would do when they replace the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by what shaitan wants. They did not witness the creation of the heavens and the earth as they did not exist at that time. Not even their own creation. Nor did I take those who misled as a helper. Al-Adud is someone who you can depend on. So Allah did not depend on anyone when he created the, the skies and the earth. He did not take any helper when he created people. So there are no partners for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So why are you taking, taking these people, these, you are listening to shaitan, you are taking, you are listening to the shaitan of ins, the, the devil of amongst the humans. Why are you listening to them? Why are you obeying them? So Allah will say, وَيَوْمَ يَقُولُ نَادُوا شُرَكَائِيَ الَّذِينَ زَعَمْتُمْ يَا Muhammad. Remember the day, on that day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to say, call those partners of mine, remind them that they will be asked to call the, those who associated with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those whom they worshipped instead of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they, they will, Allah would say, Call those partners of mine whom you claimed. You took them as partners. Call them now. Some people worshipped the sun. Some people worshipped other people. Some people obeyed shaitan. Some people, so call them. So this is an order. And remember, look at this irony here. Fada'awhum. So they called them. So this was the only order that they obeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with. They did not obey all the orders that Allah has given them, but they obeyed only this order. So they called those people, those partners, but they will not answer them. They did not answer them. And we shall put destruction between them, between the believers and the non-believers. So the people of guidance and the people of non-guidance, uh, non those who were misguided, they will be separated. And what will happen to those who did not believe? So the criminals shall, shall, shall see the fire and what will happen to, me, to them. Only then they will realize that they cannot escape being thrown into it. They thought that they will be, they, it will not be for them, but they realized that they were mistaken. That will, so when, when uh, and that by itself intensify, will intensify their anxiety and their distress. Actually, looking into the hellfire 
is by itself a punishment, a big punishment. Why? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah, uh, in surah Tabarak, إذا رأتهم من مكان بعيد سمعوا لها تغيظا وزفيرا. When the hellfire sees them from a distance place, they will hear its fearful roaring sound. So both parties, the hellfire and the non-believers, both looked and see. They look at each other and they see each other. So the anticipation and fear of punishment is in itself a real punishment. And they will find no way of escaping it, no way of fleeing. It will be inevitable. It will be their place forever. There is no end. That's it. وَلَقَدْ صَرَّفْنَا فِي هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ مِنْ كُلِّ مَثَلٍ وَكَانَ الْإِنسَانُ أَكْثَرَ شَيْءٍ جَدَلًا And indeed, we have given every kind of example in this Qur'an. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the Qur'an that he has revealed for mankind. But man is ever more quarrelsome more arguer than anything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the same story in the Quran many times. So he, for example, he mentioned Surah Musa. So many surahs in the Quran mentions uh, the story of Sayyidina Musa. But each of, the, of these ayahs each of the places that was mentioned talks about it from a certain angle. And that's why the Quran is a miracle that the more you read it, the more you understand it. Nothing like the Quran. The more you read it, the more you feel, oh, I want to read it more. The more you understand, you say, oh, I want to understand deeper. So, it's not like any other book. If you read it one time, you can read it twice, three times. If you like it, you will, you will read it 10 times, but that's it. But the Muslims are so attached to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they know that this is the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They know that when they want to be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will be reading his words. They will be reading his book. And you know, so many people do their best to memorize the Quran. So there is a connection between man and the Quran. And this is what we always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep this connection strong between us and the Quran. وَلَقَدْ صَرَّفْنَا فِي هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ لِلنَّاسِ مِنْ كُلِّ مَثَلٍ وَكَانَ الْإِنسَانُ أَكْثَرَ شَيْءٍ جَدَلًا so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explained everything in this Quran. It's a complete system. It's a complete program that will explain the, the right path and the wrong path. So people have the intellect to use, to choose, to choose what, what to do. But there are some people, some people who who argue. They argue just to explain themselves, just to convince others with themselves, just to convince others with their ideas. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, If there is higher in arguing, then say it. If you know it's a dead end, do not argue. Do not get into arguments. And nothing prevents men from believing while the guidance has come to them. However, rebellion and of disbelievers in ancient times and in more recent times rejected the truth. 
even when they witnessed clear signs, even when they witnessed proofs, they asked Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, to provide them with what, what shows his truthfulness. But even though they did not, they did not believe because they refused faith after, after, uh, after witnessing the signs. So they asked Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, and they asked uh, and, and uh, previous nations also asked their prophets just to show them punishment if they are truthful. So cause a piece of the, of the heaven uh, to fall on us if you are truthful. This was one of the requests. Bring Allah's torment upon us if you are one of the truthful. Another request. So what prevented people from being believers when they got the, the guidance and to ask Allah for forgiveness? Except that the ways of the ancient be repeated with them. What happened to the ancient nations? They were destroyed. Their overwhelming punishment destroying every last one of them. So this was the what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did for them. He removed them all. He destroyed them all. And this is the difference between the punishment of the people of the previous nations, of the previous messengers, and that of the people of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Previous messengers, their nations were destroyed while they were alive. But Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was making dua for his ummah that Allah will not destroy them, that Allah might get righteous people out of those non-believers. So this is by itself uh, a comforting, Allah is comforting Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam not to, work, to overburden himself with grief over those people who did not believe him. Because there were others who did not believe their, their messengers. وَمَا نُرْسِلُ الْمُرْسَلِينَ إِلَّا مُبَشِّرِينَ وَمُنْذِرِينَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying here, we, do, we send not the messengers, except that they are bearers of good news and they are warners. Before the punishment, messengers give good news to those who follow them and they warn those who oppose them. If you do good, you will find good. If you do bad, you will find bad. You will be punished. There will be winners and there will be losers. So non-believers would argue with falsehood in order to refute the truth thereby. They tried to weaken the truth that the messengers brought, but they cannot. And they took my proofs and my evidence, my miracles sent with the messengers. They took all that for jest. They were mocking everything. They were making fun of all my signs. And they were warned that they will they will be punished, but they did not listen to them to that. And who does more wrong than he who is reminded of the signs of his Lord but turns away from them, forgetting what his hands has ha, have sent forth? Inna ala Truly, 
we have set covers over their hearts, lest they should understand and they, they this this Quran. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala khatam Allahu ala kulubihim wa ala sam'ihim wa ala absarihim ghishawa. Allah has set a seal upon their hearts and upon their and upon their hearing and over their vision there is a veil. وَإِن تَدْعُهُمْ إِلَى الْهُدَى فَلَيْ يَهْتَدُوا إِذَنْ أَبَدًا And if you call them to guidance, even then, they will never be guided. وَرَبُّكَ الْغَفُورُ ذُو الرَّحْمَةِ لَوْ يُؤَاخِذُهُمْ بِمَا كَسَبُوا لَعَجَّلَ لَهُمُ الْعَذَابِ بَلْ لَهُمْ مَوْعِدٌ لَنْ يَجِدُوا مِنْ دُونِهِ مَوْئِلًا And your Lord is most forgiving. He is the owner of mercy. Were he to call them to account for what they have earned, then they surely would have hastened their punishment. But they have their appointment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this time, this for this time, there is no escape. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim wa اللهم لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته